Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the latest in our webinar series, the 2021 Recruitment Roadmap. Now, certainly we know these have been difficult times for everyone and nothing has gone according to plan. But I think one of the things we have to recognize is some of the good that come from it, some of the blessings that come from it. And I was doing a webinar uh, just a couple of days ago with a teacher in service. And I said, let's all just go around the room and talk about one thing we've learned from this that we wouldn't take back. One thing that we're doing now that will keep moving forward and that it's important to recognize with all the darkness comes some light too. And so I would thought this, I would thought I would start this very professional webinar with a very unprofessional thing, a puppy. Everybody loves a puppy, don't they? Hello, all you music teachers out there. My name's Riley. Riley is one of the blessings that we got from this experience and something we wouldn't have done if it weren't for the COVID crisis that is hit. Now we're excited to be here today. I'm not gonna lie. I think I'm more excited about this than any webinar that we've put together. Um, some of the materials that we're gonna see, you're gonna see are truly going to be groundbreaking. And we are gonna share some things with you, some tools that are unlike anything that we have ever put together. And they're not just impressive in, in what they do, but we're, they're impressive in with the ease of which they can be implemented. Um, I'm not here all by myself. I'm here with my good friend, brilliant collaborator, um, and snuffleupagus, Andrew Hernishin. Uh, Andrew, jump on and say hi real quick. Howdy. Uh, my name is Andrew Hernishin. I uh, help run Be Part of the Music with Scott, and you've probably seen me in the chat box from time to time. Uh, but I'll be uh, partaking in today's webinar a little bit. That's, I think, what people really showed up for. It's not the content. It's not the material. It's to meet Andrew because he's been known in the Be Part of the Music circles as Snuffleupagus, that only Big Bird can see him. And clearly, I'm not Big Bird, and I see him. So we're excited to have him here uh, tonight. He is the yin to my yang. He does things very different than me and has a different skill sets, and it's just going to be awesome. So I'm gonna get going because our goal is um, 2021 Recruitment Roadmap, three steps in three weeks to 30% growth. And we're gonna try and present it in 30 minutes because we know you have a lot going on and you've sacrificed enough and we wanna get you back to your families. So understanding that, that's our enemy right there. You're staring at the enemy. I have seen the enemy and that is it. It's an empty chair because the thing is, an empty chair means a student isn't learning. Now, you've heard me say this before. Students are the currency of the educational process. Financially, with more students comes more dollars. But musically, that if you want better clarinets, get more clarinet players. If you want better violins, get more violins. If you want better balance in your choir, get more members in your choir. That really, it, it's, it's the panacea to all problems. It truly is. And the, the most important thing about that is that's the one thing that's in our control. I can't control what our legislature is going to do. I can't control what my governing board is going to do. I can't control what the NEA is going to do. I can't control what NAFME is going to do. But what I can do is I can control my enrollment. And so the one thing that fixes everything is the one thing that I have control over. And the goal is simply this, to get more bottoms and chairs. Because the greatest teaching moment to an empty seat is like the perfect performance to an empty hall. It does no good. We can't help kids that aren't there. We can't impact children unless we have them in our building. And we need more kids in our building. And we know that because that's what COVID has taught us. COVID has taught us that impact has been significant. And without going through all the details, the highlights, the high level stuff is the lower the grade, the higher the impact. And that the higher the grade, the lower the impact. So maybe, maybe if you're an elementary school um, teacher of beginners, you, you may have had your program shut down. It may be 100% or it may be 40 or 50, oh, or 60, which is the norm that we're seeing. Or, or you might be a high school music teacher and your impact might be anywhere from 10 to 17%. But every student matters. And remember what I talked about at the beginning of the webinar. With every blessing comes a curse. With every moment in darkness comes a moment of light. And this moment of darkness has led us to a moment of light and a chance to create something new that we might not have thought of, that we might not have had the time or the focus to put together had it not been for COVID. And also a moment of light for you that maybe a renewed effort and a renewed focus and a renewed uh, sense of energetic uh, effort towards recruiting will lead you to have a bigger program than you've ever had before, impact more students than you've ever had before, and impact them at a greater level. And before I move on, one of the things I, I was going to share is that, that I was talking to a teacher who's pretty down out and dejected yesterday. I said, you're really struggling. And she said, yes. I said, but understand this. The level of suffering is equal to the level of impact. 
the more you're hurting means it's the more you're helping. And so that sense that you're feeling is perfectly natural, but know that it means you're making a difference. And that's what Andrew and I are here to do today, to help you help kids. So what we've done is we've recreated the 2021 Recruitment Roadmap. Three steps in three weeks to 30% growth. Now, please understand that no one's going to recruit the same. What we're going to share with you may need to be adapted based on whether you teach band or choir or orchestra. It may need to be adapted um, depending whether you teach elementary school, middle school, or high school. It may need to be adapted depending whether you teach a rural or urban setting. But the bottom line is we're about to show you not just the resources, but the systems and processes to have your best year yet. And the 2021 recruitment roadmap is simple. It's easy to use. It's customizable. You can adapt it to any level, any age, any curricula, any geography, and any teacher. And it's an all-in-one solution. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm excited, it's a game changer for music education. And you're the first people who get to see it. Now, one of the things we know is some of our stuff is overwhelming. We got lots of videos and lots of documents and lots of software and lots of, of, of social media content, and it gets a little overwhelming. So what we decided to do was break this down into three simple and easy steps over three weeks. One step, one week, leading to 30% growth. Step one, you're going to gather all the resources that you'll need. It's like going, you're, you're making a dinner tonight and you've got to go to the grocery store and make sure you have the recipes. You know, maybe you've got most of the stuff already. Maybe you just need to pick up a few things or maybe you have nothing compiled. It doesn't matter. We've gathered it all in one simple, easy to use place for you to gather. So step one, gather your, rest, your resources. The next step that you're going to take is you're going to develop your plan. You're going to decide about, well, what am I going to use and what I'm not going to use? Well, that's appropriate for my high school kids, but I wouldn't use that with elementary school kids. Oh, that'll totally work with the drum line, but that will not work with the flutes. That you're going to just kind of put together a plan. And we've laid out all the basics of the plan for you. All you have to do is populate the resources into the places where the plan exists so that you can now take all of your, all of your things and put them in sequential logical order that allows you to see the bigger picture. And then step which is collect your data. Yes. You've gone wrong, assess where you've gone right, assess who's enrolled, assess who hasn't, assess what worked and didn't work, and then re-engage and get after the kids that aren't enrolled. Step one, gather your resources. Step two, develop your plan. Step three, collect the data, assess it, and re-engage the kids that are missing. Now, it seems pretty easy because it is because we know how hard you work. I spent 17 years on a podium and my worst day wasn't probably as hard as your every day. That this pandemic and distant learning and hybrid learning has created barriers and obstacles and taken away pleasures and joys that make your job more difficult by a magnitude of 10 than anything I experienced. So Andrew and I sat down and we said, okay, we gotta help. We got to not only get them everything they need, but we have to build it for them. And so one of the things we take the most pride in is that we didn't just build, we didn't just provide solutions, we built systems. And to explain a little bit more about those systems, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly. Just give me a sec here. Scott, can you see my screen okay? I can see your screen okay. Okay, perfect. So what we will share at the end of this presentation is a link to register for this roadmap. Three steps, three weeks, 30% growth. So the first step, uh, pretty simply, is just to register, provide some basic information. And if you've used our resources in the past, uh, this is a form you've already filled out. Uh, but one thing to note, and the reason that I, I pulled the form up, is because in addition to uh, the resources that we're gonna show you, we'll also send you uh, a set of emails over the course of three weeks. And so uh, one bit of information that we wanna know is when would you like to start receiving these emails? When would you like to start sort of this three week roadmap plan? Um, because some may be starting recruiting now, uh, some may be in the middle of it. Others may not be starting recruiting for uh, another few weeks or a couple months. 
And so we wanna make sure that we're timing these emails appropriate to your recruiting, recruiting calendar. So the first step is simply to register and that'll take you to uh, the uh, actual uh, roadmap page here. This is split up really into two parts. The first part is we wanna be able to provide you with the direction that you need, give you information and uh, directions that will help you through the recruiting process. Um, Scott Lang knows better than anyone uh, what to do. So each of these pages that you'll see has a video with Scott to give you some really important direction. So that's the first part is direction. The second part is uh, being able to take that direction, take the resources that we provide and get organized. And so the other half to this is uh, what we're calling uh, the recruitment dashboard. This is an organizational tool. It's a, a, a Google sheet that'll help you list out all the activities, all your uh, recruiting tasks, uh, as well as uh, organize resources uh, that we provide uh, that'll help you through the next three weeks. And so I'm just gonna quickly touch uh, on, on the three steps here, give you a high level overview. And then Scott will spend a little bit of time uh, talking about the recruitment dashboard. So like Scott said, there are three steps to this process. The first step is to gather your resources. The second step, develop a plan. And the third step, deploy, assess, and re-engage. So in this first step, uh, it's important to, uh, to take a look at all the resources that you have in front of you. And when it comes to be part of the music, uh, we're constantly trying to innovate and provide new resources that help make recruiting and retention easier. Uh, so the first thing that you'll need to do is just browse the resources that we have. So we've made it simple here. Uh, these are the, the most important resources that we think you need in this process. Uh, and I'll just list them here, but uh, during this process, you can browse them, you can identify which ones apply to your program, and you can ignore the ones that don't. So to start the uh, personalized recruitment webpage, this is perfect for uh, programs that start beginners. This is basically a personalized webpage that allows you to drive parents and interested students to a page that has your school name on it. Many of you are probably already using this, and so uh, this isn't uh, new to you, but this page uh, offers instrument demonstration videos. It gives parent interviews, student interviews that explain the value of music education. There's an instrument matching tool on there, and there's a way for students and parents to indicate that they're interested in signing up for your music program. The great thing about this is that this page can be created for band or orchestra or combined pages with band and orchestra. So that's the first step is determine, are you gonna use a personalized recruitment webpage? Again, it's geared towards programs that start beginners. So maybe high schoolers, uh, that's not a tool that you need. If we scroll down the list, we see recruitment videos. And so this page uh, just allows us to browse all the videos that we, uh, that we have with Be Part of the Music. Uh, but we've uh, broken it down into uh, level as well as orchestra and band. So uh, if you are, a high school program, you can click this and it'll scroll all the way down to the relevant uh, videos for high school. Uh, same thing if you're getting banned, it'll drop you there. Then you can take these links and use them uh, however you want in your recruitment efforts. Again, we provide direction for how to use them, but you can determine which videos apply to your music program. The next step here is uh, looking through our bilingual recruitment documents. So this page uh, just lists all our documents and you can again scan them and identify the ones that uh, you think are relevant to your program. Same goes for pre-written parent email content. So if you're starting new beginners or if you're bringing in uh, middle schoolers or high schoolers, you can drop to the section that's relevant for you. And we've created copy and paste content that you can use uh, throughout the recruitment process here. And these emails are geared towards uh, allow allowing parents to see the benefit of music education but then following through the process to make sure that their child gets registered for your class. So that's copy and paste uh, email content there. We've also provided some social media graphics that you can use. So if you have a social media handle uh, and you're struggling to make uh, graphics for yourself, we've provided uh, a handful of graphics here that you can easily just right click and save your computer and then post on your social media however you see fit. The last thing in this resource uh, section are the uh, parent uh, flyers that we have and the banners that you can order. So these are great resources uh, that allow you to hand out materials. And with the pandemic right now, that's obviously a little bit challenging. Uh, but if that's something that you want to try to do, we have these uh, flyers available to buy, as well as banners that you can have printed. Banners are great because they last a really long time. Uh, and they're really big. So that's the first step of gathering your resources, is browsing to see what's relevant 
and then identifying which, which pieces of content and resources you wanna use in your recruitment roadmap. And again, Scott will touch on a, on a great organizational tool that we've built to make that a lot easier. That's this step right here, build your dashboard. Uh, this is probably the most critical step because it gives you access to that Google sheet uh, that I've been talking about. So once you click that, it'll take you to a page that asks you to copy the document. That's simple, click make a copy. Now you have your very own copy and other people won't be editing uh, your program's sheet. So really important step. And then the third step in all of this process is basically using that Google sheet to upload uh, your prospective student list. What's really cool about this is this, uh, this sheet allows you to track all the students that you hope to get into your program and determine if they've registered and then verify that with your uh, administrative team at your school. There's some fun calculations and stuff that goes into that, that that gives you a great idea of how you're performing. And again, Scott will cover that. So these are just, this is the first step is, is take stock of what you have uh, and determine what resources you wanna use. The second step is to develop a plan. And what we've done in this step along with Scott's video is given you three weeks worth of critical tasks that you can do that will help boost your enrollment. And so uh, again, Scott covers this in this video here uh, and it's uh, pretty straightforward stuff, uh, but these are tasks that will help you uh, engage students and grow your enrollment. The final step is deploying and assessing and re-engaging with students uh, that haven't committed to your program yet. And so this is the final step. And again, it, you'll notice that the pages uh, get less and less. The first step obviously requires uh, a lot of work to, to browse your resources. Uh, the second step is to uh, execute on your plan. And the third step is to assess your performance. Uh, and there's some steps in there that allow you to, uh, to make sure that you're engaging students that have fallen through or haven't committed. So on a high level, that is the plan for you. Uh, but like I mentioned, that is only half of it. That's providing direction and, inst and instructions for you. The other half is how do you get organized uh, and make sure that you're enrolling as many students as possible. And that comes down to, the, uh, to this really cool uh, Google Doc sheet that has all of these tasks listed, as well as all the uh, resources that we've looked at. So uh, I'm gonna pass the screen back to Scott so he can show you that. Um, but the important thing for this program is register. We'll send you a series of emails over the course of three weeks and we'll give you the plan that you need to make sure that you're getting students enrolled. Scott, if you want to take back the screen. Uh, you bet. So I love, I love everything about what Andrew just said. And he, um, he is just such an incredible resource uh, for uh, Be Part of the Music and for myself. Now, what I'm going to share with you now is something I'm really, really, really excited about. And so before we begin, I know you're probably thinking, okay, I've been on for 10, 11 minutes but I don't fully understand what this thing is. I, I, I hear the words he's saying and it makes some sense to me, but I'm not fully getting what we're talking about. So I'm gonna ask Andrew, are you seeing my screen now? I am, yes, but I-, I Okay, can so you move see the, the impact screen. report, correct? No, I think you moved that off your screen. I can see your cursor. Okay, so uh, thank you. I've got a multiple, now you see it. I see it now, yeah. Okay, so this is our COVID impact report. And it's a part of our comprehensive, customizable recruitment and retention Google Doc. So some of the things I want you to share, I want you to understand is number one, if you look at the tabs along the bottom, it's gonna give you a breakdown of all the content and where it is so you can easily and quickly access it. Those are two important words, easily and quickly access it. The second thing you need to know is although it is everything that we've done here is customizable. So um, I'm, I know Jason Schwann's on and I love Jason and Jason has about 180 kids in band. Hey, Scott, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, some people are asking if you could uh, zoom in a little bit, make that screen a little bit bigger. I absolutely can. Is that helping? Can you see it better now? People yes. Some people are responding yes. I think some people would like a little bit more Zoom if possible. Okay. I don't know if you're full screen. Let's try that. I thought I had it set full screen. Share screen. I wanna share just this. This should solve it. Does that help? It should. That's better, yeah. So what, one of the things you're gonna see is that all of the places that have gray boxes is where you input content, input numbers. How many kids did you have last year? How many kids do you have next year? 
What do you project for the year after that? What were your rehearsal minutes like? What were your rehearsal minutes like this year? Volunteer hours, community service, performance opportunities, financial impact, and honor band. What this does is it gives you a starting point. Now, if you decide you don't want to do the impact report, that's completely fine. You can use as little or as much of our materials as you would like. But the bottom line is we want you to know that we've broken it down so you don't have to sift through a lot. And when you sift through it, it's simple to grab and go and get what you want, much like you would at a store. The second tab over, you're going to see all the social media content. And we've grouped the Facebook, um, the Facebook and the Twitter um, content on the left. We've booked the Instagram, which is shaped a little bit differently, content on the right. Again, grab and go. You can drag to your desktop and then you can use it as often as you want, whenever you want, with whomever you want. The next thing, and this has been one of the most popular things that we've done, is whether it's our parent advocacy newsletter, which has over 340,000 parents receive our content. We write the content, we send it to the directors, they put their name on it like they wrote it and send it to their parents. Um, what we've learned through that is you like solutions that are pre-provided for you that you can still customize to some level. So what we did is we wrote three customizable emails for you to copy and paste and send. We broke them down into beginners. You haven't started an instrument yet. We broke and then into returning or middle school and then into high school. And we wrote three emails for you that you could send out one a week over the three weeks that you are going through this recruitment process. We also gave instructions and tips on how to do it best. And we tell you what content is applicable to what parents. So this would go only to the parents that have responded. This would go to all parents. And with every email, we use a call to action. And the call to action simply means respond to this so I know if your child's engaged and involved. Now, if you're using our elementary, um, elementary build a website program, all of that will automatically go to you anyway. So we didn't include that same call to action in the elementary. We really thought this through to try and make it not only easy to use, but actionable, that you will be able to get real results in real time. Next, we put all of our videos in one spot and we broke them down by content area. So if you teach high school, which is what I did, and you teach band, you can very quickly know which content applies to you. But my favorite part is we hyperlink every single thing in this document. Every sheet, every sheet and every cell of the document is hyperlinked so that you don't have to guess what the video is. You can see the video and then copy it and use the video. Again, probably the impact report, the social media images, pre-written emails and videos, you're not more than three minutes into this project, maybe four, four minutes and you've almost built a massive campaign. Next comes the document. We did the same thing. We broke it down so it's systemizable. What is the content? How is it grouped? And how does it apply to me? Again, all documents are hyperlinked. So the minute you click on it, it downloads to your desktop allowing you to choose what content you want and use it when you want, how you want. The next over is we built a pre-populated enrollment sheet. And you haven't seen all the bells and whistles yet, and you're about to. But one of the things that's super cool is we track your enrollment from the master dashboard. And every time someone enrolls in music, Scott, you're in view only mode. I don't know if it's okay. going to copy there. Anytime yeah. someone enrolls in music, then it will count them automatically and populate your enrollment dashboard. And then last but not least, and this is what it all leads up to, is your actual dashboard. So you're going to spend 5, 10, 15, 25, 30 minutes culling through the impact report, through the social media images, through the pre-written emails, the videos, the documents to see what you want and how you wanna use it. And then you're gonna build your dashboard. Once you've gone through the other four pages, this will be the only page you will ever need. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the top left-hand corner. You're gonna put your registration date, the kids register, the start date, the end date, what your enrollment goal is. And then as you, as you start to enroll students, this will automatically update what your enrollment is. 
you're going to not do it just yourself because this is too much for one person. You're going to point a student czar. And every time you add a student and name a position, this is going to turn from yellow to clear. So you visually understand, okay, I've filled all my positions and I'm ready to go. Hey, Scott, real quick. I'm sorry. Do you have a, do you have another tab open there? The demo one on the top right? Maybe that one's not view only. There you go. So I wasn't going to show them this just yet. So I'm coming back to this. Over this, when over, we provide a week-by-week -week synopsis of what you need to do, a place for you to determine what videos you're going to use, when you're going to use them, and then checkbox when they've actually been used. We do the same thing with a much more detailed communications calendar. What am I sending out? When am I sending it out? And who's going to send it out? Over here, we do it with the documents. So you can start to really customize this dashboard so that it reflects you and your plan for recruitment and retention. And then last but not least, we do the same with a social media log and then final administration tasks. So what Andrew was just referring to is, okay, I get it. There's all that content. And then we load it to the dashboard to build our plan. But what does that look like? So I built a high school plan. I'm not sure why it's blurry. I built a high school plan. This is what my dashboard would look like, that Scott Lang would actually use these materials. And then I assumed that my plan was in its second week of implementation. So you can see, I chose my student mission registration dates in three weeks. I have a start date, I have an end date. I wanna get 100 kids in band and I've only got 45 kids in so far, so I'm at 45% goal, but I'm not working alone. I appointed Brett Hohalter as my student czar, Shauna Ford's in charge of my social media, Adelita's my database manager, Kayla's doing my email, and Kelly's handling all my peer-to-peer -peer coordination. You can tell high level where I'm at, so I know if I'm falling behind or not falling behind on something, because we see the green and we see the white and we know what hasn't been done and what needs to be done. But this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part is now you can go to these other tabs. You can actually copy the content and paste it into your dashboard so that the content is live and living in your Google Sheets. And it can be accessed by anyone on your student team, your parent team, or yourself. So you see my plan, I would only use three videos, but I would use three of the social media commercials. I've got one a week on Mondays, I've got the social media commercials going out on Wednesdays. Now, since I taught high school, I'm using email, I'm using parent-to-parent -parent contact, but I'm also using text messaging. I probably wouldn't use that if I taught middle school or elementary school, but I would use it. And the beauty is it's all post and hyperlinked to it. So if I click on social media, it takes me to the social media page where I've already pre-chosen my content. I have all of my docs, already preloaded. So I know, oh, on 2.1, I click on this, it automatically downloads it, which it's doing right now. It's on my desktop, and then I'm ready to send it out, which means on February 1st, let's see, I have one social media post, one doc post, one email. Yeah, I may have spent two and a half minutes on February 1st, two and a half minutes, but I've deployed a comprehensive marketing campaign to market my program. We provide you not only with all the content, but we even break it down. Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? What are you using? And then you can actually assign it to your social media coordinator, who for me happens to be Shauna. And then finally, at the end of the three-week campaign, what you're going to do is compile your impact report, share it with an administrator, share it with your student leadership team, and tie up all the loose ends that make sure that you're following up and following through to make sure that every student, every student that said they were gonna be enrolled is actually enrolled. So what does this dashboard building process look like? It's really simple. You start with impact report. These are actual numbers that I filled in based on my own band program, my last year teaching. Talks about community service hours, leadership training hours, performances, parental involvement, monies raised, and enrollment and leadership. We've got all the social media content ready to drop and drag and for you to implement instantly. We've got the pre-written emails, 
But then is here where you start to customize it. I've already pre-selected what content I'm going to use. Notice, I don't teach middle school, I don't teach orchestra, and I don't teach beginning band. So I've chosen content that's applicable to me. Now all I have to do is literally copy the hyperlink. Copy this, this hit control copy, go to my dashboard and paste it in. The same thing can be said true for documents. I built, I built a campaign based on the content I would use. And for me, being a visual person, I want to see what I, I'm going to use, check mark it so I can easily grab it and ignore what I'm not gonna use. So not only does it, 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 it provides accountability and it allows you to see what you're using and not using, but it also helps to clear out the mental space of, well, if it's in white, I'm not even gonna read it. I don't need to think about it. It's not mine. Then you start to build your enrollment dashboard. And this is what I build. So every time you upload a name, you put all the data in. So if there are, I have 75 returning kids and I have um, 25 possible incoming eighth graders. So I have a hundred possible kids. So my goal is every child. I want every kid in music. Then I load every kid's information. And as I register them, it automatically populates the dashboard. Watch the number change right here in D5 and watch the percentage change in D6. So as you enroll kids, you get to see in real time where you are in achieving your goal. And this becomes your spreadsheet for accountability that's accessible by every member of your team, by your administration, and by any coworkers that you're sharing these tasks with. Then once you've built it and you're 100% to goal, it also provides for accountability for the counseling department. You can actually do this yourself or share this with the counseling department and you can verify that the kids are actually enrolled. We've not only created everything you need, we've not only made it customizable by choosing what you need, when you need, how you need, and altering what you need, but we've put them in one easy to manage place where you can track in real time, not just what you're doing, but the impact that it's having. Never before has anything like this been available. And we built this with you in mind. We literally sat down and said, directors didn't have time for this before. Now they absolutely don't have time. And directors were frustrated with being overwhelmed with all the to-do lists before. And now that's times a factor of 10. So we had to make this easy, accessible, and customizable. And that's what we did. So before I share with the rest, Andrew, are there any questions from the chat box I need to address before moving on? No, I don't, I, nothing yet. Uh, some people were asking, uh, can I use this for multiple programs? If I teach, let's say sixth graders and also middle school, you know, and my response in the chat box was absolutely, you can copy this sheet as many times as you need for as many programs as you need. Well, and the other thing, I think if, if you feel like, I'm just all over this stuff. I'm gonna do 50 things, more power to you. But if you feel like, okay, I'm just gonna send out one email. Well, that's better than no emails. I'm gonna do one email and one social media post. Well, that's better than no. Choose off, not only choose to use, not only what's applicable, but what's manageable for you. And so some of you will take this Google Doc and blow it up and add 35 more fields. Some of you will just use the upper left-hand corner, those five box. We're not here to tell you how to recruit. We're here to give you what you need to recruit. And you use it in a way that behooves you, your students, and your program. Any other questions, Andrew, before I move on? Yes. <laughs> Some people are asking what the price is. Uh, of course, everything we do at Be Part of the Music is Don't free. Don't tell them yet. Don't, <laughs> because wait, there's more. There's more. Andrew, <laughs> Tell them it's free. It, of course, it's free. The, the only thing that uh, that costs anything with Be Part of the Music is just the, the physical stuff, the recruitment kits, the parent flyers that are printed on, on nice cardstock, and then, of course, those big banners. And that's just because, you know, we'd love to give those out, out for free, but, you know, there's a significant cost associated with those. And so um, we do sell those at, you know, pretty close to, to cost. Um, and so everything else that we provide, though, all the videos, the documents, all the content, all the resources like this, uh, are certainly free and will continue to be free. There's no catch 
uh, someone was asking what's the catch. Um, so uh, our aim is simply to empower music educators and do as much as we can to make uh, music education a success uh, you know, across the country. And we're gonna share th this at the end is a, a rising tide uh, raises all ships. And so we want you to share this with all your friends and all your colleagues and all your social media feeds so that we can get more kids to be part of the music. And you all know my history, but Andrew uh, was a drum major of a drum and bugle corps. He serves on a board of a nonprofit drum and bugle corps. He was a saxophone player and he apologizes for that and uh, <laughs> spent time in a practice room in college. So we both share the same profession um, and he brings a wealth of expertise on marketing and technology and I bring the expertise of 17 years on a podium. Any other questions before I, I share the what's left in our in our presentation? Yeah, I know I, you'll probably cover this at the end, but just uh, so I know some people are asking, where do I sign up? Uh, Scott will provide that link uh, here in a few slides. We wanted to make sure that you were able to see everything first and hear it from us so that you would know how it worked uh, before we had to sign up. So uh, that's coming. And then uh, someone was re referencing the, uh, I had talked about the recruitment kits. Uh, we are all out of recruitment kits. Um, unfortunately, uh, we sold out all of our inventory, but we're, we're working on what it would take to hopefully get some more or break those kits apart, maybe into uh, all the cart items. Um, so as soon as we have more information about that, we'll let you know, but we certainly have the parent flyer cards and we have those big banners available. So obviously we're super excited about this and you know that we've put some time and energy into this. So we start with you the resources, but that's the beauty of it. It's like, remember we said, it's like making dinner that you have ingredients that you are comfortable using and not using. Be Scott, creative. I'm so, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Scott. You, you have your uh, presenter view on right now. Uh, See, it should. Uh, yeah, you're talking about technology. Sometimes it still gets the best of us. It, boy, it certainly does. So let me exit out and let me reshare. Share screen, share screen two. While Scott's doing that real quick, I just, I wanna to touch on, you know, the, the part that I shared is, is, you know, really geared towards providing direction and instruction and guidance and tips. Uh, and then that Google sheet you saw is really about how do you organize all of that? How do you organize your plan? How do you get clear about what tasks you need to do? Uh, and we wanted to include all the resources in that, in that sheet so that it's one place to go. Uh, but certainly the first step of that in browsing those pages and watching those videos from Scott uh, will hopefully give you additional um, support and guidance through this process. So as I said, it's, you know, there's a difference between being a, a baker and a chef. A baker is an exact science and recipes have to be prescribed and followed. And a chef, you get to be more creative. Think of yourself as more of a chef as you're making dinner. So use what you want. Don't use what you don't. Add more some of the things that we've put up on there. Add some things we haven't put up on there. But just know that we've also got all of that for you and ready to go. Now, we're getting to the end, and I'm seven minutes over. And for that, I apologize. And we want to leave plenty of time for Q&A. But you've got all of the content. You've got a way to organize it. You've got us delivering it to you. And not just tonight. We're gonna stick with you. When you sign up to build your own dashboard, you'll be getting a weekly email from us at a starting point in time of your choice that not only reminds you of everything you need to do that week, but then maybe gives you a little bit of a motivation and pep talk along the week. So we're gonna be with you throughout the whole process. But I want you to, to get in your mindset of I'm going to think different. So this is marketing you know, that we're trying to communicate the power of what we do. And you should have fun with this. Like if this were me, I would get my leadership team in and we would, it would be game on. We would gamify the crap out of this. I'd buy them lunch at McDonald's. I'd send them, you know, Starbucks gift cards. We would set goals. We would have tote boards. Like literally, I would just blow this up. I would tell them I'd shave my head if we hit a certain number or dress in a clown suit. Have fun. And not just because it will result in a greater enrollment. And it will but because there's enough doom and gloom right now, let's give people something to smile about. Let give, let's give kids something to get excited about. The second thing is what I said, give kids something to get excited about, involve others. Don't be a, a martyr and don't take this all on yourself. Even if you teach elementary school, they can hang a poster. They can bring something home. They can photocopy something. They can reach out to a friend that there's a level of engagement regardless of the level that you teach. So please, parents, students, colleagues, friends, 
family, kids, involve others. And never, you've heard me say this before, never be ashamed or apologize for doing the right thing. Music is good for kids and never before, never has it been more important than it is right now. We know what we're hearing with social emotional learning, isolation, teenage angst and depression, that never has music been more important. If someone says, well, I'm too busy or well, we don't have it in the budget, then my answer is then you're doing this wrong. And I'm sorry that you're wrong, but I'm doing what's right for kids. And I am gonna fight for every kid and I'm gonna fight to the end Every kid is my kid. Every kid is a music kid until you prove otherwise. And like Cassius Clay, I ain't going down lightly because fly like a bumble, fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Nobody recruits better than this guy. That's me. Hear what I'm saying. I'm getting after this and I'm getting every kid. You got this. You can do this. Fight for every kid because it's right. Fight because it's right. Your recruitment roadmap, it's as easy as one, two, three. I know that's a challenge for Andrew because he plays sax, but everyone can do this. Step one, gather your resources. Step two, create your plan. Step three, collect your data, assess it, and re-engage the kids who haven't responded. Are you ready to start? Are you ready to see what your dashboard would look like? Are you ready to just go out there and kill it? Here you go. This is your URL address to download and create your own roadmap. As Andrew said, it's gonna start with the registration process. Don't be intimidated. We're not selling your data. We're not monetizing it. We're not sharing it with anyone. It's just so we know where you are, who you are and how we can help. We have a 10 year track record of being fiercely protective of you. So you're gonna fill out that registration. That tells us whether you're high school, middle school, elementary school, band, choir, orchestra, and what part of the country that you might live in, in case you know we wanna just pop by. Then what that's gonna do is trigger you to the Google doc that you will then copy into your Google Drive. You'll have the link where you can copy it and automatically create begin creating your own customized recruitment roadmap plan. And then what you're gonna find is by registering, and we know you're out there, and we know what you teach, you're gonna to start to hear from us. You're gonna hear from Andrew on Mondays. You'll recognize that Andrew's writing. It's reflective of Andrew. And then you're probably gonna hear from me on a Wednesday or Thursday, and it's gonna be reflective of me. And when you put them together, we produce, we give you not only the content and the resources you need, but the motivation to be successful. We wanna thank you for coming tonight. We hope you're as, as excited about this as we are. Andrew, maybe if, if they wanted to share a URL on, uh, on, on all this content, today is probably not the day to do that because tomorrow we're gonna to send them an, um, an email with the content from today, the video from today, a re uh, covering everything that we did today and a link um, where they can share. Is that true, Andrew? It is true, yes. And I do wanna uh, answer one question that I've seen in the chat. Um, some people, hopefully many people on this webinar have already used Be Part of the Music resources. And so the question is, if I already registered at bepartofthemusic.org, do I need to register for this? And the answer uh, is just simply yes, because registering for this gives you access to the roadmap. And it's what triggers the uh, the email follow-up, that email series that I talked about when you put in a date there. So even if you've already registered, um, go ahead and do that again. That way you get access to the roadmap. And understand that we have, when you go into our system, what we do is it's called tagging, recruitment roadmap. So um, you can you might be registered in our system, but not assigned to this program. You may be assigned to our parent advocacy newsletter, or you may be assigned to our um, our recruitment blueprint. This just lets us know who's using what and allows us to then target all our communications to people just using this content. We are so excited. And this toolkit, just so you know, that we're sharing with you this Google Sheets, it's only the beginning. Andrew and I have the non-beta version in our brains and we're already hard at work building the next iteration of this for you because we know how hard you work. So we know how hard we have to help. It's just that simple. We know how hard you work. So we know how hard we have to help. So with that, 
We're going to turn it over. Um, Andrew, there's a question. Once we've tried, th this is the end of the official uh, part of the webinar if you're watching, but we have found that the Q&A seems to be the best part of our webinar. So I'm going to open it up to the Q&A. Andrew, are we tied to a date once we register or is this accessible for a longer period of time outside of our three-week recruitment? Yeah, absolutely. The answer is yes. So uh, the three weeks is just, we wanted to provide uh, some clarity and guidance within a three-week period. Your recruitment... Uh, Season may last a lot longer, it may be shorter. You may be in the middle of recruiting and so you only have a week left. Um, the whole idea uh, was that we would give you access to the roadmap and you can use that whenever you need it. Um, the only thing that relates to the three weeks is uh, basically the three weeks that we send you emails related to the roadmap. And so, you know, we could have simplified this and as soon as you register, we'll send you three weeks of content. Um, but if you don't start recruiting until later in the year, it made more sense to send you those emails then. So you're absolutely not tied to any date other than that's when we'll send you the emails. Uh, but you can certainly access this, access this all year long and you can continue to use it and customize it throughout the year uh, as needed. So accessible, accessible, customizable. That's the customizable part and easy to use. Um, uh, Jennifer Jones asked, if we get things translated to different languages, do you want copies of those? And the answer is, Absolutely, yes. Um, the reason we have all documents available in Spanish is because of be part of the music uh, team member, and that's what we like to think of you as, part of the team. We always say, we should get jackets or something, or patches or something. Um, a be part of the um, music a team member said, I, I copied all these and put, put them into Spanish. Would you like a copy? So we absolutely would like copies of anything that you create. Um, Holly Gunther asks, um, do you have Somali translations? No, but Holly, again, um, uh, please know that we would love your copies of Somali uh, content after you create them. Uh, Beth Shalada says, thanks for the orchestra resources. That's absolutely correct. All this is available for orchestra, band, and choir. And while we don't have elementary choir videos, we do have middle school and high school choir content. And all of our documents, all of our documents, are, um, are be part of the music. And they don't say band, they don't say choir, they don't say orchestra because we're sensitive that within a place for everyone, there are separate places for everyone. So here's a question. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to you, uh, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I teach one period of beginning band at high school. Does the bepartofmusic.org customized website make sense with just one beginning band class? Yes. Yeah. Any time, any, any class you teach, any, any, any level you teach, uh, if you're starting beginners, that totally makes sense. Uh, I, Scott, I assume they're talking about the personalized recruitment webpage. Right. Yeah. Any time the, the personalized recruitment webpage exists for you to have a forward facing webpage to send parents to that is personalized to your music program. Um, in the past, you know, we would just encourage you to send your parents to be part of the music.org. Uh, they can see all the videos there and really understand the value of music through our page. And we thought, how, how powerful is it when uh, a parent or student goes to a web page and it's personalized to the school uh, and the student and parent can get all the information about different instruments, about the value of music education, how it'll transform their kid's life or the kid's life if the kid is watching it. And so we wanted to create a personalized way for you to do that. And so that's the whole purpose of the personalized recruitment web page. Um, so if you are starting beginners in any way, definitely recommend you give that a, a, you know, a try. And like all of our resources, like Scott said you know, several times, if there's something that you try and it doesn't quite fit your program, that's completely okay. You can set it aside. Um, but hopefully there is uh, quite a bit that will help you during this process. Uh, so um, just to reiterate this point, uh, um, Shane Churchill asks, I'm going to be meeting with local, local music teachers soon. As long as I give you credit, we'll be okay to present present what you presented tonight. And I cannot stress this enough. Andrew and I are not interested in credit. In fact, Andrew, until tonight, had never been seen in front of anyone and threatened to find me $100 every time I even mentioned his name. You did threaten me, Andrew. We don't want credit. We want more kids involved in music and we don't charge for anything, for anything. Uh, next question. Uh, I teach beginning band and middle school bands at four schools. Does the program allow the input of students, their information along with their school name? Can they upload that data? Oh, Scott, can you say it again? I thought you were gonna field that one. I, 
I teach beginning band and middle school bands at four schools. Does the program allow for the input of students, their information along with the school name? In other words, can they copy and paste their existing documents into our spreadsheet? So what I would say, yes, uh, I, I would recommend copying the, the recruitment dashboard Google sheet for as many programs as you have, because you want the data segmented. You want to know who belongs to which program. And so instead of creating a, a column in the Google sheet for program, I would say have a separate uh, dashboard for each program. Uh, that would be the simplest way. That way, um, the calculations and stuff that we have in that Google sheet, it'll automatically calculate for a specific program. Uh, if you're sort of combining programs into one uh, enrollment sheet, it, it can be a little hard and you'll have to, you know, venture outside of what we built to, um, to give you the right information. So hopefully that's what you're asking. But uh, as far as, as the actual list goes, as soon as you have contact information, we recommend putting it in that sheet. And of course, I hope this goes without saying, but we don't have access to any of this information. That's why you're copying the Google Sheet into your own drive. It's, it only belongs to you. We do not have access um, to any of that student information. We don't have access to your enrollment numbers or your tasks. Anything that goes into the sheet is yours. Um, we do hope though, at the end of this process, uh, we'll send you an email and, and hopefully get some feedback from you and ask what worked and what didn't. And uh, as part of that, we'd love to know how to go. Did your enrollment change? Did it grow? Um, and what was that growth like? So we don't know what that is until you tell us. And so that'll come down the road. Um, uh, so feel safe knowing that all that information is secure. Um, you can build your, your student list in there safely. So Evan Thomas asked, and I think this is an important question. Uh, do your videos feature African American students? And the short answer is yes. But the longer answer is this. Since 2012, we have kept an Excel spreadsheet tracking gender, ethnicity, um, height, weight, and we even track instrument biases. So you may notice that we have a female tuba player. You may notice you'll see a male flautist. That we literally, within the limited scope and sphere of what we have, so be part of the orchestra is only six actors, seven actors. Like, we, we worked hard. We have a Middle Eastern violinist. We have an Irish other violinist. We have a South American, African-American gentleman playing cello. I mean, it's, we went to and continue to go to extreme lengths to represent all cultures, all genders, all economic levels and do it in as balanced a way as possible, knowing that you can't just hire an actor. They actually have to be able to play the instrument at a pretty high level. So Evan, we appreciate that question. And we want you to know that has been on our mind and at the forefront of this, not just in the past eight months, it's been in the forefront of our agenda for the past 11 years. And again, we even looked at instrument biases and we tried to address those as well. Um, could you provide a sample website to look at what a finished product looks like? I'm sorry if I missed it earlier in the presentation. So, you know what, you don't even, I'll say this, um, uh, um, Matthew Anderson, to create a new website on your own takes less than two minutes. You don't need to see our sample, go build one. And if you don't like it, build a second one that you can do it. It's so easy and so quick to use, so quick to use that you can actually, actually do it in less than two minutes and have your own customized solution. Uh, Anita asks, and then Andrew, I'm gonna kick it back to you if there's any questions that need to be fielded to me. Um, Anita asks, um, have you developed a choral section? And what's going to be part of the music's matching band? Yes, we have. We have choir resources for middle school and high school. We do not have choir resources for elementary school. And there's really a couple of reasons for that. And it's on, it was on our agenda until COVID hit. Um, rule number, reason number one is there really is no mystery in choir that we're trying to solve. It's not, well, what is a French horn? What does, what does an oboe sound like and how difficult is it to play? Um, the second reason was we're holding that spot because we think elementary choir will be the spot where we can land a face to the organization. Pentatonics, Jordan Sparks, Kristen Chenoweth, the Goo Goo Dolls. Those are all people that we've actually had beginning conversations with. That when it comes to that vo vocal component, we see that as a springboard to getting a face for the entire movement of music education. And that's something we're actively working on. So those are the two reasons we don't have choir materials for elementary school. But again, we are cross-platform in middle school and cross-platform in high school. And all of our videos and content show only video 
of people in that area. So the choir video only shows choir. The orchestra videos only show orchestra and the band videos only show band. What other questions are out there, Andrew? I was just responding to uh, Matthew Goats. Uh, he was, he, uh, I think, downloaded the, the Google sheet into an Excel sheet. And that's completely fine if you'd prefer to do that. Um, I would just say the only caveat is that some formatting may be changed going from Google to Excel. And then I think the biggest thing you noticed was the, uh, the check boxes, which are a cool feature uh, that they turn to true false uh, statements in Excel. And that's just because the checkbox, checkbox feature is a neat feature of Google Sheets and it doesn't translate into a checkbox in Excel. So um, we'll certainly, um, I think it'd be good for Scott and I to look into that and, and maybe we could um, try reformatting an Excel version for those who can't use Google Sheets. Uh, but in the meantime, the Google Sheets hopefully will work for as many people as possible. Yeah, and the important thing to think about with um, Google Sheets, and, and I'm by no means a Google expert, I've gotten much better in the last few weeks, but is that it's a collaborative tool. And that Excel doesn't always, unless you have Microsoft Cloud and all your students have Microsoft Cloud, it's not as collaborative. And so the beauty of, of the dashboard is that you can assign tasks to students and when they check in in the morning, they see what their task list is for the day. It's a much more collaborative uh, document than Excel. So you lose some of that functionality uh, when you leave um, Google Sheets, but certainly you need to do what works for you. So Scott Marin asks, if we create a recruitment webpage, we would need the link from that to paste into our dashboard, correct? Yes, because everyone's link will be different. And everyone's link is custom. But I think something to think about is, I, I talked to Andrew about this earlier, is for seven bucks, you can go to, um, you can go to uh, GoDaddy and instead of be part of the music.org forward slash page forward slash a, a ridiculous long URL, you can buy Hopi Elementary Orchestra and it's called a mask and a redirect. And then your web page will have, uh, will display that URL, but can you can utilize that URL to get to your web page. So that's just a little tip and trick if you're feeling technically savvy. Stephen, Stephen Collins uh, asks, um, are any sections dedicated to color guard recruitment? Yes, there are. Visit the high school band area. Visit the high school band area. Do you see any other questions we haven't asked? I would just remind everyone, uh, if you're looking for that URL, it is bpotm.org slash roadmap. I'll put it in the chat again. Um, but that is the URL you're going to want to go to access the specific roadmap. And of course, if you want to just browse uh, our existing web page, you can always go to be, uh, part of the music.org. But for this, bpotm.org slash roadmap. To bring this to a close, it's 557. Um, we hope that this has fulfilled our mission and our mantra, which is real solutions in real time solving real problems. If you have a problem using it, Andrew and I are easily accessible. My phone number is 480-577-5264. And Andrew and I usually respond usually within minutes to email questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That is what we're here for. That is what we enjoy doing. And that's what helps get more kids involved in music. So I ask everyone who's still on the line, which is uh, more than half of you that started this, um, if you have any feedback to throw in the chat box, and if you're feeling adventurous on a scale of one to 10, uh, rate this product. 10 is you guys hit it out of the park Tonight exceeded, and this program exceeded my expectations. I love the 12. Um, that's a spinal tap reference. This one goes to 11. Um, and a one is you two should consider other careers. Andrew plays saxophone, and he wasn't even good at that. Why did you hire him? We certainly understand those as well. We'll leave the chat box open. You know, see, Andrew never gets riled up. It's just he never gets fired up. It just drives. You can see how we're different, how we make each other better. Um, Thank you to everyone. I will leave the chat box open to answer any other messages. Um, I'll turn off my camera and I'll say with a minute left, um, you got this. We appreciate you. Take the fight to them and get every child, every child to be part of the music. Take care, everyone. Have a great Monday night and be sure to share all of these resources when you get them tomorrow on your social media feeds and just email all your colleagues and friends so that we can raise the tide and raise all the boats in it. You got this, everyone. Take care. Good night. Again, the chat box will be open for a little bit. Good night.